and thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Aaron Porras, here with ILTV's Morning Briefing. Tensions with Gaza have surged to the brink of war. Last night, multiple waves of rockets were fired from the Strip into Israeli territory, followed by dozens of Israeli counterstrikes. The back and forth only escalated as the night dragged on. As of this morning, there finally seems to be an uneasy calm, but to put this in perspective, this has been the most volatile 24 hours between Gaza and Israel since the 2014 war, Operation Protective Edge. The Iron Dome's alarms were triggered in the late hours of the night as rockets and mortar shells fired from the Strip in a series of waves. The night sky in southern Israel was alive with the sound of Israeli jets scrambling and explosions in the sky. At this time, at least in Israel, no serious injuries have been reported. One family's home in Israel's Eshkol region, however, took a direct missile hit. The sounds of war were apparently so loud that the family didn't even realize their home had been hit until they woke up the next morning and saw a hole in their roof. Israeli air teams have struck some 25 Hamas targets throughout the Strip in response to these attacks. The army believes both Hamas and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad terror group were behind the assault and have accused Iran of supplying the rockets. Reports say Egypt stepped in and brokered a late-night ceasefire deal in an effort to cool the situation, though Israeli officials deny this is the case. For now, the rocket fire has stopped. Israeli leaders have promised a swift and brutal retaliation if they resume, under the belief that Hamas is not, in fact, seeking an all-out war at this time. American and European leaders have united to condemn this aggression we're seeing now out of Gaza. The United States is seeking an emergency meeting on the UN Security Council to address the crisis. And the Council is expected to meet later today to denounce Hamas's actions and demand accountability from Palestinian leaders. Multiple American and EU leaders, including United States President Donald Trump, have publicly come to Israel's side amidst the biggest barrage of rockets from Gaza since 2014's Operation Protective Edge. France's Foreign Affairs Ministry has reaffirmed that they are, quote, unconditionally committed to Israel's security, end quote. For most, the message is clear. Firing missiles at civilian targets in Israel is very much the opposite of seeking a peaceful resolution to the Israel-Palestinian conflict, a position taken by representatives from both the EU and the United Nations. It may be worth noting here that Israel has often criticized the international community for not taking Israel's side when it comes to situations like these. Israeli conduct during the 2014 war in Gaza were heavily criticized, for example, despite the daily rockets fired into Israeli territory. But in this case, the world's powers seem to have collectively joined behind Israel and hold Hamas accountable for their violence. A group of Israeli farmers began their work week on a somewhat sour note. After harvesting and packaging hundreds of pounds of onions, Galilee farmers awoke the following morning only to find that nearly a third of their score had been stolen from right under their noses. This onion heist went down at Kibbutz Manara, where local farmers say that, although this may be the biggest theft of late, it isn't the first. Representatives say that they've been under near daily agricultural crimes, including theft, crop burning, and even the torching of their farming vehicles. Locals claim that these acts are nationalistically motivated, though they also admit that money may be the true bottom line. At this time, no suspects have been identified for any of these alleged crimes, nor has evidence been offered that suggests terrorism as a motive. This week's heist netted 440 pounds of onions, and that would yield a significant chunk of change if sold directly to retailers. Just days after the publication of a scathing report on anti-Semitic attitudes in France, a new poll on the attitudes towards minorities in Western Europe doesn't seem to have much better results. In Britain, for example, nearly a quarter of respondents said they'd be unwilling to accept a Jew as family members. According to the Pew Research Center's report entitled Being Christian in Western Europe, nearly 10% in the UK say they wouldn't even be okay with a Jewish neighbor. Over 24,000 randomly selected individuals across 15 different Western European countries were surveyed for the poll, and there's a margin of error of up to 3%. But that's pretty normal, so the results are quite telling. For comparison's sake, in response to the question, would you be willing to accept Jews as members of your family, Britain scored second highest for people who said no. Italy came in first with a solid 25%. The results against Muslim and immigrant minorities were often equally offensive. But the results weren't all bad. In the Netherlands, for example, a whopping 96% of nearly 1,500 people say they'd have no problem with a Jew in the family, and there were many other countries that were equally open. The report read, quote, Most Western Europeans say they are willing to accept Muslims and Jews in their neighborhoods and in their families, and most reject negative statements about these groups. And on balance, 
more respondents say immigrants are honest and hardworking than say the opposite, end quote. The Czech Republic has now reopened its honorary consulate in Jerusalem following its closure in 2016. Originally opened in the early 1990s, the Jerusalem Honorary Consul was closed two years ago when the Honorary Consul passed away. But after the United States decided to move its embassy to Jerusalem earlier this month, combined with many calls from President Zeman to move the Czech embassy from Tel Aviv as well, the Honorary Consul is now reopened. This decision of course also follows Paraguay and Guatemala who moved their embassies to Jerusalem as well. But the Czech Foreign Ministry promised in April that the reopening had nothing to do with their position in the peace process. Though Zeman has been an ardent supporter of following suit and moving the actual embassy to Jerusalem now, he would need full support in the government to do it. And according to the Foreign Ministry, Prague, quote, fully respects the common position of the EU that considers Jerusalem as a future capital of both states, that is to say the state of Israel and the future state of Palestine, end quote. That's all for now. I'm Aaron Porras, and see you later with our main daily broadcast from Israel at 2 p.m. Eastern Time.